The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Next on UMass Sports Insider, we'll visit with a hockey defenseman who recently represented his native country in the World Junior Championships. A Swede who's been an NHL draft pick and is now helping lead the UMass back line. And you'll get an in-depth visit from one of the UMass basketball team's senior leaders. Now a 1,000 point scorer who has helped take the team on his back offensively in his final season. Plus, we sit down with the two men in charge of the swimming programs at UMass as they get ready for their championship drive. Russ Yarworth and Bob Newcomb preview the action in the pool this winter. UMass Sports Insider, let's dive right in. watching UMass Sports Insider, presented by Mafre Insurance, Coca-Cola, and Office Depot Office Max. The Minutemen are back in the swing of Hockey East action, and this weekend Coach Micheletto's squad plays a big home-and-home -home series with in-state rival UMass Lowell. All conference matchups are critical at this juncture, so now UMass looks to pick up some big points to help them move up in the league standings. Hello there and welcome to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host Josh Maurer as UMass Hoops gets ready for another tough A-10 game at Davidson on Saturday. In a few moments we're going to sit down with the team's leading scorer Trey Davis. But let's start with hockey where UMass has a freshman defenseman from Sweden making a huge impact on the ice thus far for his team this year and recently competed in the World Junior Championships in Finland. Let's meet him, William Lagesson, as presented by Office Depot, Office Max. It was great. Uh, it was a lot of fans there, and uh, and uh, it's a short, pretty short tournament, so all the games are really important. And uh, I think we did good in the beginning, and then uh, didn't really end that uh, the way we wanted to, but uh, it was still uh, still a great experience. It's pretty cool uh, because it was pretty close to Sweden, so we had a lot of Swedish fans there, and. Uh, it was a lot of fun to play in front of all, uh, all the fans and uh, my family it came to watch there too and that was, that was great. The World Juniors it started to get bigger and bigger and more and more people watch it. So yeah, it started to get bigger and uh, that's, that's cool. It helps his confidence first and foremost. You play at a, a level like that against the best players in the world under 20. You step back into the college game and although the, the skill level is still quite good, I think playing every other day against some of the best players that the world has to offer. It gives him a confidence moving forward. I think that'll translate to our team as well. Uh, you're playing uh, against the best uh, players in the, in the world and your age, so, and if you do it well, like, obviously you get like good confidence in that. It feels good. That means a lot to, to represent your country, and it's, it's a really cool uh, thing to do, so that means a lot. We just through the recruiting uh, over my career in Sweden, uh, we developed a cadre of contacts, try to get names of up-and-coming players, particularly in Scandinavia, uh, that might be open to the NCAA route as a, as a career choice. Uh, as soon as William's name was passed along to us as somebody that might be open to the NCAA, uh, we were eager to get into that recruiting battle. Uh, my advisor helped me, helped me a lot uh, during that process. and. Uh and uh, we picked some schools that I visited and then uh, we picked UMass because I uh, heard a lot of good stuff about it and uh, so I came here and visited and I liked it. You build from the net out and as we continue to become a good program and a, a program that challenges uh, on the national scene. He's certainly a piece on the decor that you need to build around. A guy that can play in any situation, man up, man down, up by a goal late in the game, down by a goal. Uh, he's a guy that's very level and even keel as a, as a person. His emotions very rarely get away from him. A guy like William uh, has given us some veteranness in that freshman class. That is a bit unique to him. Before the draft, I didn't really know uh, much about the draft and w what's that about and stuff. So I I was at home and watched it with, with my family and 
obviously when I saw my name on the, on the screen, selected by the Oilers, I get really happy and uh, it was a big, big dream that came through and uh, I got a, after that I got a phone call uh, from them and they said congrats, we, we selected you. Uh. It's the vast amount of experience that he's had at NHL development camp with Team Sweden over the last handful of summers, uh, as well as his play in Sweden in the junior leagues there, as well as the USHL has really prepared him. Thank you so much, William. For Lagason and his teammates, it's a big Hockey East home-and-home -home weekend coming up, beginning with a Friday night Mullen Center tilt against 11th-ranked UMass Lowell at 7 o'clock. We hope to see you here in Amherst for the contest. Well, it's time for us to take a quick break on UMass Sports Insider, but don't go far away. When we come back, we'll meet one of the UMass senior basketball leaders, a soft-spoken sharpshooter from Texas who is continuing to move up the all-time scoring list. Trey Davis joins us right after this on the other side. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack or the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. Single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. thinking insurance company with a global network focused on taking care of you and your family providing freedom from worry everywhere you go Moffre insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family Moffre insurance I'm getting ready to shop for school supplies, and I'm kind of super excited about it. A number two pencil. It'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like, I'd open a pack of paper, and I'd be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> I love that sound. Oh, the future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm going to get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. I have an agenda. <laughs> Leadership isn't given, it's earned, realized, accomplished, fulfilled, won. Leadership isn't given, it's taken. Anderson into the post for space. Kick out to Trey Davis. Step to his right. A three-point shot is up. It's good. 42 to 40. Minute men. Trey Davis. The last five points of the half. UMass the last 10. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. We're talking men's basketball now. The team is out at Davidson on Saturday. It's another tough Atlantic 10 game. And now we visit with the team's leading scorer. We welcome Trey Davis on as presented by Office Depot Office Max. It's good to see you, Trey. Good to see you too. Thank you. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you scored your 1,000th career point. That's become kind of the marker that separates a lot of players throughout college basketball. Did you or did you not score 1,000? And, and you did it with a lot of games to spare. You yes, keep sir. moving up the point charts all time here. What did that mean to you? Uh, you know, it was good to just be honored in that category. You know, everybody doesn't get to get to 1,000 points. So uh, I'm just happy and uh, thankful and blessed for that opportunity. And uh, we got more games to go, so I just see where I end up at. Congratulations. 
This season has been quite the transformation for you offensively. You're the man. You're scoring 19 points a game. Take me through the progression that you've had throughout your career. Oh, uh, man, just hard work. Uh, I think I kind of started from the bottom coming here. I kept learning and uh, kept battling, and uh, I just uh, stayed faithful to the gym and to the game, and uh, it helped me in the long run, and I'm uh, thankful for that. You're one of the most confident guys that we watch play. It's the old-fashioned shooter's mentality, I think. No matter what happened with your previous couple shots, you always know that the next one's going to go in. Where does that confidence come from? I think I was born with that. Um, you always got to believe in yourself, because if you don't, nobody else will. And uh, Ain't nobody else shooting that shot for me, so you got to believe that you're going to make it. You grew up in the Dallas area. Tell the, the viewers a little bit about your hometown, and then we're going to talk about all the Dallas guys that are currently playing for UMass. Dallas, you know, it's more urban. Uh, you know, uh, I love the downtown area. Um, basketball's big out there, uh, as well as football, you know. Uh, I guess people think about football because of Friday Night Lights and all of that, but did you ever play that sport? I played football my eighth grade year. I played with uh, Space, actually, and um, yeah, that was, that was kind of funny. That wasn't your thing? No, no, no. I mean, I could catch, I could catch, uh, do that, but I never liked to get hit. I used to always run out of bounds and uh, things like that. But Space was playing on the opposite side of him. He was wide receiver. He caught a couple of passes. Uh, it was funny, but he caught them, so. You're talking about Antoine Space mm -hmm. and also Zach Coleman. Those are guys that you've known for so many years and now three of you here at UMass as teammates. Mm -hmm. What's that like to have that family here? Uh, man, it's just great. You know, I, I think about that almost every day, just seeing how now I got uh, Antoine up here as well as Zach Coleman. And I actually got a friend that goes to uh, AIC. He went to high school with me and he's down here now. So, you know, I try to show him love as much as I can. And uh, I just try to show them the ropes, especially Zach. Um, so when I'm gone, that he knows everything, how everything runs. But it's just good to have family up here, man. And they, they live with me, so um, I always get to see them. And uh, it's kind of, it feels like sometimes we're in Dallas, just hanging around each other, so. Just sh shifting the scene to Amherst, Mass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Trey, as we move into the final couple months of your career here and these important Atlantic 10 games, I know you've taken leadership on this year as a big part of your role on the team. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how you're preparing guys for these these games down the home stretch and all the important basketball that's going to be played? Um, well, basically, just let them know we are, these games that we're about to play, the, I think the last 15 are pretty much much win games. Um, I think we know that and they know that. So we're just going to uh, just come out hard, man, and try to get the wins. I think they understand they got the first three games under their belt and uh, of how hard you have to play. Um, these games are not easy. Atlanta 10 is one of the uh, a great conference. So um, we're just going to have to come put our high hats on. And finish the season strong and, uh, and try to get in NCAAs because that's my, my dream, you know. Have it to go in there two years, you know, my sophomore year and this year, that'll, that'll be good for me. Well, Trey, continued success. Thanks so much for stopping by to spend some time with us here. Oh, thank you. Time to take a break. When we come back, we're moving indoors to the Balmy Rogers Pool and starting our preview of the UMass swimming and diving teams by chatting with the head man for one of the most successful programs on campus, the many-time A-10 champion men's squad. We'll be right back with the great Russ Yarworth. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack or the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. The single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TIX or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider and now coming to you from Joseph Rogers Pool. This is the home of the UMass swimming and diving teams and we're going to be previewing the big portion of the schedule for both the men's and women's clubs starting with the men's squad. We've got head coach Russ Yarworth and one of his senior leaders, Brian Stiles with us and this conversation Brought to you by Peter Pan. Coach, there are always expectations for your program, each and every year, just like last season. You want to win the A-10 championship. How do you think the guys are stacked up to do it this year? Well, we, we just came off a great training trip. The team culture was excellent. The uh, attitude and the, obviously the weather was uh, perfect. So, um, you know, coming out of that training trip, I'm very pleased with where we're at. I think we got a good talent base. And more importantly, as I mentioned, I think the team culture is really focused on what we have to do to hopefully defend the championship in a couple of weeks. Brian, as one of the senior leaders of the team, what's the mentality right now as you get into the part of the year where you really start kind of earning your keep? Well, we're coming back to the cold, so we got to deal with that. But besides that, it's a very positive attitude. 
I think everyone's happy to be training. Um, you know, it's tough for a lot of the guys, but we keep it going and do what we can. This is, as I mentioned, the time of the year. It's, it's important. Everything counts down to that Atlantic 10 championship, which comes up in February. So a little more than a month away from that. What do you do, Brian, to get yourself ready for that meet over these next few weeks? Well, uh, until about two weeks, it's pretty much just the same thing I would do any part of the season, just train, make sure I'm hydrated, eat, sleep. About two weeks into it, I start tapering a bit more. I uh, have to watch some movies, Miracle comes to mind. Uh, you know, get myself psyched up. <laughs> Coach, tell us about some of your other team leaders besides Brian here. Who are the guys you're going to be counting on here in these next few weeks? I think you have to start with a whole senior class, and they're certainly led by Alessandro Bumprezi. He's, uh, you know, he's Atlantic 10 swimmer of the meet last year. He set school records, Atlantic 10 records, and uh, the rest of the seniors, Joe Woodman and Evan Shaludko, they're really going to help us out uh, with their leadership and experience in the meet. Then we have a very positive and motivated and talented freshman class, and you combine those with the guys that have been at the meet for a couple of years and hopefully defend what with uh, a title. Brian, I was saying earlier, here with your program, with UMass Men's Swimming and Diving, A-10 championships, are, they're, they're kind of the norm. They're expected. Yeah. Does that put pressure on a senior class when you go through it for the final time? Absolutely. Um, so my freshman and sophomore year, we unfortunately lost the A-10 championships. And uh, coming into the team, it was kind of just uh, normal to win. When we didn't do that, it was a real blow. So after winning last year, we really want to you know, finish off our time here with a win. Coach, take us through some of the upcoming meets that you have so people know what you're going to be doing and where you're going to be competing. Yeah. Just to add on what Brian said, we try and fight the complacency of champions. The other two seniors I remember were Victor Karpinski and Kyle Vieira, a sprinter and a distance man, and uh, they've got great experience and, uh, you know, really be, they'll be there for us. As far as the meets coming up, we swim at Bryant on uh, Saturday. Our Main event for the uh, spring semester right now, other than A-10, is the Dartmouth Invitational, which in two weeks will um, basically be establishing the A-10 scoring team out of that uh, meet. We have some kids who definitely be on the scoring team, some kids who are still competing for spots. It's a nice problem for a coach to have, is to have kids that have the ability to score points at the meet, and we have to choose who's going to score most. Well, guys, we wish you best of luck moving forward. Again, welcome back here to the States. and. We'll be seeing you in the pool very soon. Right, thank, you. thank you. Russ Yarworth, head coach, and Brian Stiles, one of the senior captains of the team. We're going to take a quick break here on UMass Sports Insider. On the other side, we're going to move over to the women's swimming and diving team and get the lowdown with Bob Newcomb, the head coach, and one of his senior leaders. We're coming right back. Leadership isn't given. It's earned. Realized. Accomplished. Fulfilled. One. Leadership isn't given. It's taken. And we're back on UMass Sports Insider, continuing our preview of the big portion of the schedule for the swimming and diving teams here at UMass. Presented by Mafre Insurance. From the women's team, we welcome on head coach Bob Newcomb and one of the senior leaders, Rebecca Query. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Every year in January, you get a, a great trip down to sunny Puerto Rico to train for the important part of your schedule. Coach, tell us about it. How, how was the trip as you come back now and get ready for some important meets? The trip was incredible, as it always is. The team responded with great training, um, and I always tease them, and they say that you want the two T's out of this trip, Tra training and tanning. <laughs> and we managed to get it all, and, but the training was excellent. So I'm very happy when we left that uh, we got what we wanted out of the trip. Rebecca, it looks like you got some sun too, a little, little bit of a tan. Take, take us through it from an athlete's perspective. Uh, as a fourth year student, um, Obviously, Puerto Rico wasn't as much of a shock for me this year as it had been in years past. But, I mean, the training still doesn't get any easier. It takes a couple days to get into it. But once we got into our second cycle of training, I could really see improvements in how me and my teammates were doing in the pool and on dry land. You know, tell us a little bit. I, we talk about, well, you go to Puerto Rico and you train. But what exactly does that mean? What, what kind of training are you doing when you're there? So we go through three three-day cycles where the first day we'll do um, running in dry land on the beach and we'll swim twice. 
And the next day we swim twice again and then we'll lift. And then on the third day we'll have a harder lactate style practice but have the rest of the day off. So that's our chance to get out and do something fun, explore the city, um, hang out on the beach. And uh, we got the chance to go to the rainforest this year and do all sorts of other fun stuff with our team. So it was fun and we do that cycle three more times. All right, coach, so now it's back to business, back in the United <laughs> States. And as you count down to the Atlantic 10 championships, you guys have some pretty lofty expectations this year, don't you? We always do. I mean, the goal, the goal of our program is to win the meet. That is our standing number one goal of this program. And you know, there's always a little pressure and tension and, and everything going into that time of year, but it, it's exciting. There's, there's nothing better than a college conference championship meet. Rebecca, I know after last year you guys had a great meet, you almost won it, finishing in second place, and you had a good showing as well. What did you learn from last season that's going to help you prepare for this time? I think last season really taught me how to face adversity a little bit better than I had in previous seasons. I started off the meet not really having the best results that I wanted, but by the end of it, not only me, but my other teammates, I could see them pull through with better results than the beginning. So this year I'm hoping our hard training and um, just everything we've gone through in our dual meet season this year is going to pay off at A-10s this year. Coach, take us through the schedule that you have coming up leading into that, that big meet in February. Well, we had a, a very good meet this past weekend with Rhode Island, which is always a shock because one of the things about the training trip is it's all long course. So that's the Olympic distance. And we only do that for those 10 days. But coming back to a 25-yard pool is very different. So getting into the Rhode Island meet and getting used to a lot of turns and uh, the shorter pool takes a little time. So this week's training is, is really a, our first full week of short course training. We're down at Bryant next weekend. A great opportunity in two weeks when we go to the Dartmouth Invitational. That's where we really have everybody swimming all their events, the last real opportunity for everybody to do everything. And then um, finishing the season, our senior day against Fordham, which is home. Um, and we have an opportunity, again, one last chance to do a little fine tuning before we really allow the team to start tapering. And that's the big rest at the end where they take all this hard work and really focus it uh, right, up, right to the end of the season. Well, Coach and Rebecca, thanks so much for spending some time with us. We're jealous of your tans. And now we look forward to seeing you in the pool again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. And we'll be back to wrap up another edition of UMass Sports Insider right after this, so keep it here. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack or the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. The single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 8 Six, six, UMass Ticks or visit UMassAthletics.com to lock in your seats today. thinking insurance company with a global network focused on taking care of you and your family providing freedom from worry everywhere you go Moffray insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family Moffray insurance I'm getting ready to shop for school supplies, and I'm kind of super excited about it. A number two pencil. It'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like, I'd open a pack of paper, and I'd be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> I love that sound. Oh, the future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm going to get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. I have an agenda. <laughs> Thank you.
We're back to finish up another edition of UMass Sports Insider. We thank you for joining us. Don't forget this weekend here on campus, it's a Friday night hockey game as the Minutemen begin a home and home weekend against rival UMass Lowell. The puck drops at 7, then Saturday afternoon, the UMass Minute Women basketball team hits the Mullen Center court against Richmond in the afternoon. Next week, we'll have another new edition of the program, so make sure you join us then. Until that time, I'm Josh Maurer saying have a great weekend, and thanks again for watching.